Hey robot fans, this is part four of my Star Wars Rebels chopper build. In episode three we got a test head arm operational. This was really just a brute force construction to prove the concepts and test the motors. By the end we had a pretty gnarly looking arm with some pieces glued on and some stuff bolted on and hacked off. But it worked, which is awesome. Um, the first part of this video is going to be refining all of those parts down to a more finalized version so we can have the final footprint of each arm in place as we begin to design the interior of the final head model. So let's go through each of the areas of the arm to see what kind of refinements we can make. The pincers went under a pretty major overhaul. The nano server pulling the wire worked pretty okay, but I was never really satisfied with the wire's durability and I definitely wasn't happy with its inability to forcibly open the pincer. Relying on gravity was a bit of a cop-out, and luckily when I posted this video a few weeks ago, I also shared it on Reddit in the robotics sub, and a user named H. Willis sent me this picture. It shows some gears that open and close with a pincer-type device and a worm gear. I kind of immediately dismissed it, thinking my pincer was too small for something like that. It kind of stuck with me though, and I started messing around with the idea in 3D Studio Max and found it was definitely possible. I went back to that gear generator website that I used for the dome gear and made some new gears for the pincer. On the site, if you set the tooth count of one of your gears to zero, you end up with a rack to match your gear. I could use the servo to push the rack up through the gears which would eliminate the problem of not being able to hold the claw in the open position because the rigid rack would hold the gears in place. So this is what that looks like. I printed out a little stick with a rack at the top and when I push that through, the claw opens. The claw is happy to stay open in any position, which is already better than we were dealing with with the wire solution. When you pull on the stick, the claw closes. Uh, I think this is going to work. My only concern right now is that the stick requires a pretty smooth linear motion. The servo is obviously not going to give us that because the servo is going to be rotating like this. So the stick isn't going to go straight up and down. And I'm worried that when you combine that inefficiency with the power of that nano server, it's not going to be enough force to open and close this claw how we want to. So I think I'm going to experiment with using a solenoid. A solenoid is a little electromagnet that pushes or pulls a plunger when the surrounding coil is charged. You don't get the position control of a servo, but the only function here is going to be opening and closing the claw, so no position control is fine with me. I attached the rack stick to the end of the solenoid and installed it into the lower arm in place of the servo. In this configuration, when the solenoid is receiving no charge, the claw will be closed. Then when I charge the magnet, it'll push the rack stick about 8mm and that will open the claw. I have two main concerns with using a solenoid. The first is speed control. These things are pretty crazy fast, so hopefully I can use a PWM to at least slow it down a little bit and give it a smoother motion to the opening and closing of the claw. The second is heat generation. Solenoids get really hot really fast because they draw a lot of power. I'm trying to realistically think about how much continuous use the pincers are going to get and if it will be enough for the heat to be a real concern. As a precautionary measure, I'm going to print the arms in Tolman Alloy 910, which is pretty heat resistant, but if that's not enough, then I guess I can always revert back to the servo. The good thing about these arms is that they're totally modular, so if something doesn't work, I can just print out one little part and I reattach it to the rest of the arm. So after a few rounds of testing for fit and function, here's the arm with the solenoid installed in the bottom and the pincers reattached. This arm is printed in ABS for now. I'll use the Tolman alloy for the final because it's a little bit more expensive than the ABS. I also printed out this cap which will cover over the access to the solenoid and I'll give you your completed arm. The elbow is pretty much unchanged from the last round. I just had to move around a couple of the little excess holes and I also routed the wires through the solid part of the model rather than having it dangle where the arm was flexing. So hopefully that'll clean up the rotation a little bit. If we power this on, there's going to be an initial freak out. I'm not sure what that's all about. There it is. I'm just running the blink sketch from the Arduino library. Uh, the speed of the claw isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I can obviously control the rate of it, but the speed of how it opens and closes isn't too awful, so that should work. Now this is all going to connect to the updated lower arm. I built those end stops, which were glued onto the test arm, into the actual model to make it a little bit cleaner, and along those same lines I subtracted out all the areas I cut off from the previous arm. Also, I combined the two main sections so now there's one long piece instead of an arm glued to a servo holder and all of this gets connected to a heavily modified shoulder assembly. The old shoulder worked pretty great but it was a little overkill with that giant scale servo controlling the rotation. 
I was willing to let it go, but I ran into some problems. Uh, one is power consumption. Those mega scale servos are pretty hungry beasts, and I'm worried about how much power I'm going to be able to transfer to the head. The second is the size of their body. As I went through my 3D model and I was building out the head, I realized if I was going to have these big guys in there, there was no way I would be able to put a working periscope in because having those giant servos sliding in and out of the head with the arms would clip any installation that I put in that spot. So I opted to switch it out for a smaller servo. This is the HS645MG, which is the same servo that is being used for the spin of the head arms. They also have a metal tooth spline, which is really great because all the weight of this is going to be hinging on the servo. I actually think it's a little too much weight for that spline to handle, so I built a servo block. It's entirely 3D printed except for the round part that connects to the actual spline. That's also going to be made of aluminum, so it'll be metal on metal, which will rotate the shoulder, and the servo block will take most of the weight of the arm off of that spline. And since everything else is pretty much changed, why not change the linear slides also? Uh, this was the one I used in the last episode. I really liked the linear motion of it, but what doesn't work about it is the fact that it rotates along its own axis here. So if the arm was mounted onto here, it wouldn't stay flat. I thought I could fix this by printing out a carriage that went along two rails. The problem there is that the rails have to be mounted perfectly parallel or else the motion isn't going to really work too well. And Besides that, why should I use two rails when I can just use one? So I figured I would just abandon that whole track and buy one of these linear slides. This doesn't rotate and the motion is super smooth. I might even say it's smoother than the other one. So I think this will be the one that I use for the final slide. Okay, I have all the components of the new arm printed out, assembled and installed on that rail. I have it all powered and wired up and I started doing some testing with some pre-programmed animations. Things were going very well, and then just around the time I was going to start really recording, this happened. So I know that looked like some crazy out of control stuff, but really it was just one thing that happened. This servo that controls the elbow, it could handle the weight pulling it up, but if I tried to move the arm back down and catch it in its downward motion and pull it back up, that was too much force for this little servo. So I stripped the gears and that freak out that you saw was the gears trying to catch back up to the position that it was supposed to be hitting. This is what happens if I try to run this servo. I'm just running a sketch telling the servo to hit 180 degrees, it grinds, it hums. It's just not powerful enough to hold that arm and now I think it's pretty much toasted. So I'm going to replace this servo with this servo. The original one is the HS65MB and the new one is the HS85MG. The uh, 65 is a sub micro server and the 85 is a micro server. So it's a little bit bigger. You can see the size of them a little bit better on their sides. Oop, that one doesn't want to stay on its side. So I'm going to have to redesign the lower arm to make this larger servo fit, which is a bit of a pain, but I think it's a necessary one. Also, the larger servo has over 150% the torque of the smaller one, and it has a metal gear system, so hopefully it'll prevent that back drive from happening, which we saw in that last test. I don't think I need to rebuild and retest. I think I've seen what works and what doesn't. So I'm going to use the footprint from that last test to design the base of the head. So let's take a look at 3D Studio Max to see how we're going to do that. After a few design iterations, this is the final head base that I came up with. It's pretty big and bulky. In fact, I posted a picture of it on Facebook and the first comment was, wow, that looks humongous, which is true. But I think the bigness of it will come in handy once everything is mounted to it and there's a lot of forces being applied to the base here between the head spin and the head arms going in and out and the movement of the head arms once they're extended out. I don't want to see any sagging or any movement on this ring itself. I need it to stay pretty solid because it's also going to be nodding and bobbing. So the bulkiness will come in handy. Um, as far as features, I was able to put in a hole here for the slip ring. There's a periscope bay here where I will mount the final periscope after I see how the head arms interfere with this space. I have some wire routes here. This little tube will take wires from one side of the head to the other. And beyond that, I left everything a little bit open-ended with all these little tiny holes here. I figured 
things are going to need to be moved around quite a bit, so I'd rather not have anything permanently built onto here. I could rather have smaller mounts that are printed separately and can be tested and attached as needed. This is going to attach to the Lazy Susan using these larger holes. I bought some aluminum standoffs which will attach to the end of the screws and slip into these larger holes. Same thing for the dome that's going to go on top of this. Uh, they're going to have the same standoffs coming down and will attach to these holes. The dome itself will slide right on top of here. You can see I kind of beveled this edge down so the dome will come to here and hide this seam underneath the base of the widest part of the top. And that's about it. I think this is ready to print. Um, as soon as we get it printed out, I could mount the rails for the head arms to go in and out, and we could start testing the new servo, which will move the head arms in and out. And after many hours of printing, we have the four main slabs that make up the bottom of the head. I did a rough sanding to remove the supports and get the sides of each segment ready to glue together. And you can see I also have three screw holes that connect each of the four segments together. So here's a look at the mechanism that'll push the head arms in and out of the head. It's just a servo attached to two arms that pushes that carriage down the linear rail. Uh, if this is working great so far with no load on that carriage, so we will keep it as it is and test it out once I get the full arm assembled and attached to that carriage. So I got the lower arms installed onto the rails and I ran into a little issue here. When I redesigned the elbow server for the larger one, I did think about it being a little bit bigger, but I never actually checked the clearance between the two arms. And in hindsight, I remember that I did make that clearance pretty little, so now they are going to crash into each other. And even if I can get them to clear like they are right now, once I attach the upper part of the arm, which is a little bit wider, it's definitely not going to make it. These are going to hit each other. They overlap by about 10 millimeters. So what I'm going to do to fix that is, one, I'm going to shift each of these arms back inside of this little carriage here, about eight millimeters to give me an extra 16 millimeter gap in the middle. And I'm also gonna rotate out these rails a little bit. So give it one extra degree of rotation away from each other. So hopefully that'll clear up all the issues of clearance and even give me a little bit of breathing room since these things aren't totally straight and they have a little play in them. Another issue that came up which I hadn't actually thought about was the wire management here. We have one, two, three servos and eventually a solenoid that's going to go into the top part of the arm. And then all these wires are going to be traveling back and forth. So wire maintenance could get a little bit tricky. So what I'm thinking about doing actually is using one of those old linear rails that I had. If I can figure out a way to install two of them in the center here above everything, I can have each group of wires attached to the carriage and slide around there. And then all I need to do is get one connector to connect to the edge of the rail, which can then go down to the power distribution. Uh, maybe here I can use some kind of elastic thing to pull it back and forth to keep it taut while it's going back and forth and there's nothing drooping. But I really think that attaching it to a carriage that's also sliding with the arm is pretty important. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. My main goal for this whole entire thing is to keep as much mounted to this bottom base as possible such that the top of the head is really just a cap that comes on and whenever I need to maintenance anything I can just pop that cap off and here's all the mechanics. I don't want to have too much attached to the top where it's half attached to the top, half attached to the bottom and maintenance everything is really tricky with disconnecting all different kinds of cables and mechanisms. So for the most part I'm going to try to keep as much mounted to this base as possible. So I think I can mount those two rails to the base here somehow and keep the whole arm structure onto the bottom. So let's take a look in 3D Studio Max. We'll take a look at shifting these arms back in their carriages. We'll take a look at potentially putting those rails in and moving the rails out an extra degree. This is the rails in their current position. I want to rotate both of them out on the servo side about one degree. So this one's gonna rotate this way and this one's gonna rotate this way while keeping the position of the opposite end the same. This is the side of the rail where the arm actually exits the head. So if I can keep this position relatively the same, it shouldn't affect too much where those arms end up once they exit the head. The degree of rotation will be just a little bit more, but the look of the actual head on the side should remain the same. That whole change is going to look like this. I know it's very subtle, but if I keep flipping back and forth, you can see that that's exactly what happens is the servo side rotates out about one degree, and that will give me enough clearance probably by itself to make the two arms pass each other smoothly. But just in case it isn't enough room, I also am going to do this. 
This servo block was updated so that the servo is pushed back about 8 degrees. If we look at the current one, you can see here the base is the same. The base is what attaches to that carriage on the rail and just the housing for the servo has moved back. So the whole servo wall here gets pushed to the back and even the bearing holder here at the front is now pushed into the base itself instead of sitting right in front of it like it is here. This will give me about 8 millimeters on each side which is an additional 16 so this alone is enough space to clear the gap and the other modification of swinging those rails is enough distance to clear the gap so hopefully I don't need both of them but we'll see how it looks when everything's installed. Okay, everything is installed on the rails. The original carriages work. I didn't have to use the ones that shifted back the servo, those extra eight millimeters. Just swinging out the two rails was enough to clear everything and the servos clear both the lower arms which are installed and the additional servo. I also have the in-out mechanism attached to both arms and I have that wired up to test the in-out mechanism. And if we turn this on, you can see everything moving in and out of the head. I'm using the variable speed servo library here. The full speed of the servos was way too much for those arms coming off the servo horn to handle. They kept snapping off their splines and bending and turning down the speed was a definite must. So now it's moving much smoother and I think this is fast enough for the final form anyway. So everything is good. Chopper's wingspan is pretty impressive. This is going to be a really big project when it's all said and done. Uh, the next step here is going to be getting all of these servos wired up and functional. To do that, I will need to start building a proper control board for the head. My little rinky-dink tester board that I've been using so far has met its end. I don't think it's going to work anymore, but fear not. I will most likely use it for the body, just like I did for the head. And for now, we're going to have to move on to something a little bit more concrete. So yeah, the next video will take a little break from these head arms and deal with power distribution and Arduinos and getting all that wired up. Uh, we're also going to get the slip ring installed and install the base of the head onto the body and start having this thing function as it will in its final form. So stay tuned for that. See you next time.